Can you hear me? I'm doing really good. I hope this is all working out. Uh, you know, you just started off the fellowship with two ideas. The first one um, is to enhance the prayer of our fellowship, maybe at the end, coming together and praying about specific things together. Um, in general, we've received so many prayer requests. And if there's one thing that I've learned on this month-long marathon of a tour, it is that prayer is the guiding force in the world. I mean, you know, the science wants to tell us that, well, there's just random things that are mutating. And then somehow out of the randomness of the world, there's zebras and hippopotamuses. And, and, and I don't know. It's like, what is going on? But in Elul, we're told that this is the time that Hashem was literally dreaming up what he wanted from creation before creation itself. And so too, like in our lives, like when we take the time to really pray for what we want in our lives, what we want for our loved ones, that is the driving force of the world. That when you commit, the world changes around you based on the commitments that you make. And keeping to those commitments and staying aligned, it's all defined by prayer. And a chabura, a fellowship that comes together to pray together, it's, it almost seems like a law, a spiritual law of physics, like a spiritual physics, that it's more powerful. That's why the Jewish tradition is to pray together with 10, 10 men like brings, that's like 20 people if the wives are included, like it bring a group of people together. And, you know, Elul, <laughs> I don't think that I, I could have asked for a better gift than for it to be Elul now. I mean, the month of this trip is over. Uh, we're now like on our way from North Florida down to Miami to then fly off on the direct flight to Israel. And um, even though the last few days, Monday was my last event, and I was up until I think to two o'clock in the morning meeting with a pastor in Brandon, Florida. <laughs> we just like studied until like, the two o'clock in the morning. And the next day, of course, it's like recovering from that. But the last few days have just been 100% vacation, like no work. I said, I promised my kids we're going to work, we're going to work, we're going to work. And the last few days, we're going to be in one of the most fun places in the world. We're just going to have a family vacation for a few days. And even though it's been just full-time vacation, I'm leaving America now fully drained. Like I have <laughs> nothing left in me anymore. It's like I have, um, it's almost like I, I had a certain amount of energy that I absorbed from the land of Israel, <laughs> literally from the land itself. It like empowered me with a message, empowered me with a spirit. I went across and every night just gave over my heart and gave over whatever I had to give. And then at the end, I'm just like, I'm fully drained i'm like out i need to go back to the land like and plug my like lie on the land and like plug myself back into the charger and i just i've never felt a, a more of a time to realign myself because everything that i would have wanted to have seen um that i would have loved to have kept going i've lost on the end of this trip I, waking up early, that's just not happening. It's just exhausting with the, the hotel and the Airbnb condos. I'm eating. Tehillah has uh, somehow made kosher food for six, seven people every day in a different motel room. And so I've actually, I've become a burrito. <laughs> I've become, I just, I thought our, so we would never eat like that in Israel, but there's just no other option. We're traveling and going. It's been so many kosher microwave dinners from one hotel to the next hotel, trying to eat fruit and trying to eat vegetables, but just like so much of how I've wanted to live my life in an ideal scenario. I just, the trip hasn't allowed it. And it's just like, oh, it is so much, it's so time for me to go back to Israel and do tshuva, just to realign. And that's where we are now. But then I was thinking, you know, this fellowship, this chabura that we're a part of, this like group that's, what is that? What is that? What is the essence of it? It's like a group of people who come together to learn, to grow, to change, to pray together, who are seeking to be closer to Hashem, who are trying to become better people, try to make the world a better place. It's like a chosen people. I mean, they have chosen we have chosen to be agents of light in this dark world i mean it's so vast how huge america is and how many people are just walking around here aimlessly purposely just walking just trying to figure things out in their own confusion and then there's some people that have chosen to draw close to god that have decided to align themselves with like the ultimate good in their life, to be agents of light, to change the world. And that's really hard to do that alone.
because America is so powerful. And it's not like, you know, it's like you, I didn't appreciate the land of Israel. What makes it so special? It's like God's presence rests in the land. And you leave the land of Israel, you're leaving God's presence in some. Of course, God is everywhere and God is one with the universe, but he hangs out in Israel. His home is in Israel. And now to be alone outside of the land on your own, trying to be an agent of light with everything around you, pulling you in the opposite direction. It's like the chabura, the, the fellowship, it gives you power. It's like a group of people working together, praying together, getting stronger, getting better. It's like something amazing. And we've got, I've gone around here and you wouldn't believe, Ari, what we've done here. It's like, I don't know. It's people's marriages have been saved. People that had problems with their children, sicknesses careers that were destroyed in covid came back stronger than ever before people with personal challenges it's like our fellowship and it's all of us together that gave it the power have like just been an absolute saving for people it's been a lifeline for people and people are now living better some people are waking up early some people are doing cold plunges people's diets have changed people are exercising now they're realigning themselves they're setting time every sunday to come and learn torah with us they're praying together it's just uh, like what else could we be doing better with our lives than gathering up sparks of these chosen people that have somehow chosen this path to be so good in the world and it's like you know a new year's resolution which is really what elul is about the resolution in the western world is like i'm gonna lose this much weight this year or something like that but that's not really what teshuva is uh, teshuva is the ultimate resolution and teshuva, as we all know, comes from the word lashuv, which means to return. What are we returning to? And so this is a theme that I've been talking about all throughout my trip here, that the Torah teaches us that the whole Torah is a path from Egypt to the land of Israel, from outside of the garden back to the garden. We're all on a journey from where we are now and where we could be, where God has a destiny waiting for us of who we could be, who we are now and who we could be. It's like who we could be is our destiny that could unfold potentially. And that's a direct line. That's like where you are now and where you could be. That's a line and realign is like right now, I am definitely not on the path. I'm not eating right. I'm not sleeping right. <laughs> I'm not living right because it's just been such a, I'm on a mission right now. I'm not in like my regular routine of life. And it's okay, I'm gonna, it's Elul now. And now it's like, I'm going to return back to that path. That's why the Torah isn't called the law. It's literally, it's a path. It's called halacha. It's called the walk. It's like the, the Torah is guiding us on that walk of walking in the light, walking from where we are now to where we're going in the act of tshuva isn't a one thing resolution. It's saying, all right, I'm just realigning myself and I'm back on the walk again. I'm walking with God. That's what the Torah is saying. It's like Adam walked with God. Abraham walked before God. It's like saying, I have set God before me. I have set the ultimate good in front of my eyes. I know where I want to be this upcoming year. And this is the time of the year to actually dream that up. Where do we want to be? Who could we be? That's the real avoda. That's the real spiritual service. The inner work of this year is really getting straight in our mind where we want to be. It's not a one-year resolution. It's actually a full vision. And then the resolution is I'm realigning myself to start walking towards that. And you know what? And walking towards that, it's like stumbling into the light because it's never going to be easy. It's not. There's so much, but it's actually saying I'm back on the horse. I'm back. I'm walking again. I'm realigned toward my path, towards who I was created to be. And here is my, I would say my chiddish, my, uh, the real insight that I had as I've traveled across the United States. Because the United States has a certain version of how they've taken the Bible. Meaning, America is, an, an, as far as I know right now, the greatest gift the Bible has ever given the world. The founding fathers of the United States of America were biblically aligned people. They wanted the language to be Hebrew, created in the image of God, equality, these like visions of liberty, of freedom, to serve God in any way that you want. Now that foundation is what created the most amazing country with, uh, it's like unbelievable what the United States of America is. Now, as those biblical values are being eroded, more chaos and more confusion and more um, just like what the word is like curses are, have room to come in 
but the foundation was so strong that it's lasted a couple of centuries of just absolute prosperity, abundance, huge. I mean, watching Noam's eyes when we first walked into the first Walmart, my five-year-old Noam, he's like, <gasps> he just could not believe. It's like I, the, the store is as big as Tel Aviv. It's like this massive, just no country has ever experienced such abundance. And because America is a certain uh, uh, culture, a certain um, it's like capitalism and freedom. So they've taken the spirit of the Bible and a lot of the messages here are about prospering. It's like God wants you to prosper. And I said, okay, well, that's like a very American message, but that's not, I mean, it's, it's not that it's not true. Of course, God wants us to be blessed and God wants to bless us and he wants us to prosper. But that's not the, like, that's not the straight of the arrow. I would say the best word is flourish. God created the world to flourish. And you see it around you, the grass, the trees, the species of animals, and also human beings. We were created to flourish, not to prosper. Now, one aspect of flourishing is that you should be financially independent, that you should be strong, that you should, but it's flourishing. Sometimes someone that doesn't have much money can be the most amazing human being. Mother Teresa, I don't think she was very wealthy. Martin Luther King Jr., I don't think he was very wealthy. But the impact that they had on the world, the, the character that it took to stand up against the forces that were against them to bring light into the world, that's a soul that has flourished. And then what happens? That flourishing, that growth in Hebrew is smicha. And what do we know? The word for simcha is almost the same word, happiness and growth. That's where God has us. If we are on a line of growth, if we're on a line of flourishing, that's really the right word. Not prospering, but flourishing. That Hashem in El wants us to flourish. So now we're planting the seeds of what we want in this upcoming year. Ooh, I want to make sure that I'm taking care of my body. I want to make sure I'm taking care of my prayers. I want to make sure I'm taking care of my Torah study, my family, my marriage, my children, my parents. Just all of the ingredients that make our life beautiful. This is the time. And then allow those seeds to flourish. And from that growth, smicha, comes simcha, comes happiness, comes joy. And of course, that's not just a regular happiness. Those are the same words as Mashiach. Simcha and Mashiach, it's, that's like a full redemptive happiness. It's not a happiness that you've gone to a comedy club and they sort of said like jokes and you're laughing. And it's like kind of silly. No, it's like a fullness in happiness, like a flourishing happiness that is a fulfillment of your destiny. And so it's been an amazing trip here. The time that I've got to spend before and after events with certain people that have had time to meet us along the way just to share how the fellowship has helped them in their lives. I mean, we're doing something that is so special, so amazing. And I've just hit one country, and I just see here on the chat that there's so many countries that have all come together. And I just think sooner than we realize, right now the gates to Israel are closed. And, you know, it's like you have to do this and you have to do that and you have to be vaccinated, you have to quarantine. There's like all these rules and regulations and they keep changing. Very soon, sooner than we think, the gates are going to open and there is going to be a tsunami of believers and Jews and people that have loved the land, that have never come to the land, that always put off their trip, that always said, oh, man, I can go next year. They took it for granted. And all of a sudden, Israel has been taken away from them. And when they open up the gates, I'm telling you, there's going to be a flood of people from all over the world. And I think that's the opportunity that this fellowship is really waiting for. That could be the time that we organize right now, that when the gates open, we open up the fellowship and we say, come on down and we all come together. Because meeting people here in Florida or meeting people in South Carolina or in Texas, that's beautiful and it's amazing. And it's like bringing the light that I had from Israel and slowly kind of distributing it until I'm just totally empty and it's time for me to go home now. But imagine bringing everyone to the land on like a mass pilgrimage, <laughs> a mass, mass, hundreds of people from all over the world. And all of us can go to the Temple Mount and all of us can, I mean, we would just make such an impact in the world. <laughs> so that's the that's the dream that keeps on popping up in my mind when I keep on meeting with you. I'm like, oh, I have two hours and then I have to drive. That's not enough time. I want 10 days. 
where we can just spend time together, where people can meet each other. There's so many people that need to meet each other because they're on the same path. They just don't know it yet. <laughs> and so I think that that would be the most marvelous thing. And when we get back to Israel, I think that we need to start working towards that. A mass pilgrimage of the whole, as many people from the fellowship as possible. And we just commit. It's like our vow to Israel. When the gates open, we're there. Now imagine if millions of people do that. Something historic will happen with this mass exodus coming all from around the world. And our fellowship will be there to sort of be the, the eye of the storm in the mountains of Judea. I think that that's something that's really awaiting us. And so that was my final dream leaving here. I think that's what's been a part. Um, that's what's been given to me from this land. So I'm going back to Israel with my own dream of how we can bring this fellowship closer to Israel and, um, and to work now. Now is a month of working, a work to dream, a work to get our... Our, our, what is our, the ingredients that we need to make our life what it needs to be? A vision of where we are now and where we want to be. And then it's like, all right, we're just now doing tshuva. We are realigning. I think that is the best translation of that word. We're realigning with our destiny, realigning with the path. And then we're on the halach. We're walking the path now. We're walking in the light. And so um, all of you should be blessed um, we finally got our Corona test back because, you know, you have to take Corona tests. And we didn't know if one kid has Corona or if I have Corona. And I swear, we may have been stuck here for a month and we just had to sort of take that risk. Baruch Hashem, all of our Corona tests came back negative. We're getting on the plane just now. Like we're driving down and we're getting on the plane pretty much. So we are on our way back. I can't wait to see you, Ari. I, I miss Israel so much <laughs> and so it's good to be on our way back and uh next week to broadcast from the land i'm really excited to see what will happen as i sort of bring all the lost sparks that i've collected across this trip back to the land and let those sort of grow into something a new message that will come out so i can't wait to see you thank you all so much this has been just one of the most meaningful times of my life and so thank you all and we will see you soon Shall Hi, my name is Jeremy Gimpel. A lot of people want to know exactly what the Land of Israel Fellowship is and what members receive when they join. So let me explain. The Land of Israel Fellowship is a global online community with hundreds of members from over 40 countries around the world. There are live sessions and gatherings that create a direct personal connection to the Land of Israel and to lovers of Israel from around the world. There's no online gathering that I'm familiar with that is connected to the Land of Israel that unites and brings together such a diverse group of people, backgrounds, and nationalities, it feels like prophecy. It feels like something we need in these times, like a window in to a better future on the horizon. There's a divine unity we experience every week in our fellowship broadcast. We heard these amazing teachings from an authentic Hebrew and Israel perspective and our jaws drop. Not only because they ring so true and are such a blessing, because they are so consistent with what we believe. These Sunday morning gatherings are nothing less than a house of prayer for all nations. Cindy Lowe, the United States of America. The Land of Israel Fellowship is an amazing resource for learning Torah, the Bible, and the prophets, unfiltered and uncentered directly from the Land of Israel. We've been studying Torah for almost 20 years, but we feel we are stepping into it more than ever and seeing new depth and dimensions to scripture. We're encouraged more and more every week. Callan Ardell, USA. Members receive access to all the archives in the library of teachings on every portion of the Torah, the biblical feasts, Hebrew prayer, prophecy, sessions on the ancient wisdom of the prophets of Israel to help us navigate through these turbulent times. These sessions are so rich. I re-listen to each, and truly each session is the best one yet. Tehillah is a tremendous asset and the teachings Ari shares are so rich. I've read the Bible so many times and I've known the things you are teaching. The Hebrew understanding is what Christians have missed for centuries. Sister Georgian from Germany. The Land of Israel Fellowship is truly unique because it's built upon personal relationships with the teachers of the fellowship. Myself, Rabbi Ari Abramowitz in Tehillah Gimpel. Every member has direct access to the staff 24-6 via email or direct WhatsApp to ask questions, to comment, to connect directly to all the teachers. And over the last years, we've connected to some of the most beautiful people on the planet. So if you want to find out more and join the Land of Israel Fellowship, you can click on the link below. And if you want to try it out for just a month, you can email fellowship at thelandofisrael.com and we'll hook you up. I hope to see you. Shalom from the mountains of Judea.